What is your full name? My name is Chi Jin Kwan. When is your birthday? My birthday is December 15, 1939. What war did you serve in? Yeah, I served in the Vietnam War since 1969 to 1975. What branch of service did you serve in? I was doctor in the South Vietnamese Army. What was your rank? I was captain doctor and I was chief, chief medical officer in the province of Binh Thuy uh, in the center of Vietnam. How did you become involved? Were you drafted or enlisted? I graduated in 1969 from medical school in Saigon, capital of South Vietnam. And I was listing, I, I was living in Saigon. Then after graduate in 1969, I was enlisted in the South Vietnamese Army in the medical court unit. And I stationed in Binh Thuy province as a chief medical officer from 1969 to 1975. By the end of April 1975, Saigon fell under the Communist Party. And at that time, at the end of April 1975, I left Saigon with the help of an American friend from CIA. I got out, I got out of Saigon two days before Saigon was lost to the communists. Why did you join? I joined the American Corps and served as a doctor after my graduation from medical school in Saigon. During the Vietnam War, every man had to serve in the army from age 18 to 55. I had no choice, and I joined the army to serve my country and my people in the South Vietnam. Um, why did you pick the service branch you joined? I graduated as an MD in 1969, and therefore I joined the medical field in the South Vietnamese Army. My first few days of service were challenging. I usually in the Saigon metropolitan area with all of the comfort and easy life, and all of a sudden I was mobilized and served in the army with all the change in life, the military regulation, the orders from my superior, the commander. I didn't get used to that strict life, and I was very depressed. When I was stationed in a small rural town with a few thousand people, the town was small, isolated, and far from Saigon. We didn't have electricity at night and no place to go after work. The town was so quiet and isolated. I would be very happy. I, I would be very happy just to hear some noise from a moped passing by. I used to enjoy the solitude and stare at the sky at night. Rarely I heard the commercial jet, jet airline passing by over the town in high altitude, leaving a strip, a strip of white cloud in the blue sky. And that all for my pastime of the world. I start to, real, to read a lot about life, about philosophy and meditation. I have learned a lot since I start a new life as a medical doctor in the army. I realized that I was very lucky and I was I have seen many atrocity painful situations during the Vietnam War. I could write many books about Vietnam War, but I am not a writer. Uh, what did it feel like? Yeah, I feel like a new life uh, opened in front of me. I have learned to really live a full productive life by helping the injured soldier and their family. I understood and appreciate the service rendered to the country. What was your boot camp or training like? After graduation, I trained for three months as any soldier. I lost weight a lot, but I felt strong and, and healthy. It was a very, very rough time training everybody has to go through when joining the service. Do you remember your instructors? I remember vividly my instructor. There was many. There was one I never forgot. He was a surgeon, an instructor. 
to treat us as a spoiled gift. At the end of training, I present to him a small black and white TV, and he was so surprised and very happy. Remember, at that time, a black TV was a fortune for him in 1969. Were they nice or mean? They were very tough and strict during training, and I really appreciate it. I was first stationed in Bing Thuy province. I was, it was a small quiet town in the country, in the center of Vietnam. Then I was transferred to Long Nam Hospital, which is close to Saigon. What was it like in Vietnam? In 1969, it was quiet but peaceful, with very few military operations in the jungle at the border of Cambodia and Laos. What were your duties? I was a medical doctor and chief medical officer in the hospital of the three province, then Long An Hospital in the Long An town near Saigon. Did you ever have to fight? I did not have to fight since I stationed back in the hospital. Did you see anyone get hurt or die? Almost every day. People, especially the South Vietnamese soldiers, were injured and died. It was sad to witness the painful and cheerful situation they in the What were some of your most memorable experiences? I can forget the first time I had to amputate both legs of a badly injured soldier at Kyrgyzstan. And I wish the war would be over soon. Were you ever a prisoner of war? At one time, I was assigned to swap prisoners between the Vietnamese soldier and the communist soldier. An American C-40 has remained at a military transport or uh, airplane. Um, they took me and my nurse and 50 communist soldier prisoners. We landed in a place near the border of Vietnam and Cambodia. We are instructed to deliver the 50 prisoners to the communist party. And for no reason, the communist party kept us as prisoners for six hours. I was scared. And luckily, the American pilot the green and they let us go. But you know, I shouldn't have nightmare being prisoner, being beat up and tortured. Were you awarded any medals or citations? Yes, I was awarded some medal for uh, my service as chief medical officer, but I thought it was better given to the soldier who lost their life for the country. How did you get them? I was awarded as chief medical officer during my service at the two general hospital. Did you ever get hurt? Physically, I was okay. But psychologically, I suffered nine years after nine years for two years after arriving to California. How did you talk to your family? I communicated with my family every weekend. Sometimes I had a chance to fly back to Taiwan to stay with family for weekends. Uh, we are undernourished. The food was expensive and most of people could not afford to eat meat. The dairy product, meat of all kinds, were expensive. The diet for most Vietnamese was veggie and fish. Even the food was scarce, but my appetite was very good. Did you have plenty of supplies? We didn't have enough supplies. Even for our hospitalized soldiers. Did you feel pressure or stress? Pressure and stress are, were part of the life, you know, for the daily norms in our life. We didn't know what come up the next morning, morning, the next day, the next moment, we live day by day. Isn't that bad? Isn't that sad? Was there something you did um, for having fun? There was one time I was very lucky. I was supposed to station in the back area near the border with Cambodia. And for any reason, I didn't know, it was canceled. And I was transferred to the best place, the best hospital in Longan City, which was close to Saigon. And I could visit family every weekend, only one hour drive. How did people entertain themselves or keep up their we entertain ourselves by visiting friends nearby to the place and 
sometimes. Uh, we have few drinks, not all the time, because alcohol, beer, even soda, were out of touch, out of reach for many people. What did you do when you went on leave? Enjoy going back to Saigon, went out for dinner, or watched a movie with family. Did you recall any particularly humorous or unusual event? There was nothing humorous in my life at all, at that period of time. Only duty and responsibility fill up my daily schedule, and waiting for the uncertainty in the future day by day. What were some of the pranks or, um, or jokes you guys would have? Talking about jokes, it was plenty, but only there was a problem. It got to be Vietnamese. You got to be, uh, be speaking Vietnamese to be able to enjoy on the joke. Another word, Vietnamese joke, most of the time were for Vietnamese people, deeply rooted in the Vietnamese culture. Do you have any photographs? I have a few photographs oh. as you can of the Vietnam War. What did you think of officers or fellow soldiers? My fellow officer and soldier were courageous and very patriotic. They put their life in the line of duty and responsibility, and there was no complaint whatsoever. Did you keep a personal diary? My personal diary, diary is my memory. How could I forget the part, that part of my life? Do you recall the day your service ended? I ended my service as chief military officer three days before I left for Guam Island in March. 27, 1975. What did you do in the days that followed? Did you work, have school, keep in contact with anyone from the war, or join a veterans organization? I ended up in California, Camp Pennington, then Riverside County. I was offered a job as an orderly in a nursing home, a former doctor to an orderly in a nursing home. Imagine how hard I struggled to stay alive. I worked as an orderly. I studied English by myself. I was given an old radio, three dollars value, and from that I learned my English. I had a hard time to get in contact with other members of the family. I didn't have phone, no money, no car, no English. What could I do? Nothing but waiting for someone to visit me. It was very depressing. With no car, no money, no English speaking, I couldn't go far. As I mentioned, I graduated as MD, and therefore I just want to pursue my medical career with all my desire and work. Is there anything else you'd like to share? I have had a hard time to get a residency training program after I passed on the medical exam required by the Medical, Medical Licensing Board of the State of California. Finally, I ended up doing my training in New York. Did your outlook on life change after going through this? Training during the medical residency period was a nightmare. I worked 12 hours daily for two days, then three to four hours of call after that, and this would go on for two years. The only thing I wish at that time was able to have four few hours of sleep, that's all I asked for. I have no desire whatsoever. Give me some time to sleep and I will be happy. That's all. That's how it was hard for a foreign doctor to start a new life in America. Uh, to all my kids and grandkids, don't follow my footsteps. Be a doctor. Being a doctor in the USA requires a lot of energy, willingness, time, and what else, financial burden for the family. Stress, stress, stress is not work. There are thousands of careers, professions you can choose and enjoy this month.